again. I hope you're all having a nice Christmas or holiday season, as the case may be. I know I am. Um, put on my bright red vest. And I thought I'd take a break and, and film a few videos while I have the time. One of the videos that I should have made a while ago involves the Marlin. There were a lot of letters from people deploring the new Marlins. They said they're badly made, the metals are bad, everything's bad. And in fact, in collector's circles, as you probably know, older Marlins are now in high demand and the new Marlins, they're still very popular, actually one of the best selling firearms, according to the people I talk to, uh, retail and distributors. But they don't have the legendary status that, let's say, the older models did. So I, I waited until I could get my hands on an older model. Uh, this one, I actually just looked up the date. It's a Model 336RC, made in 1976. And I thought, well, I'll take it apart. And I, I have looked at Marlins since people started writing me. They, they do show up fairly frequently. And I try to be objective, but I thought I'll, I'll take them apart. So I took both of these apart. But there's no point in having both of these guns in pieces because um, the information I have to share with you, I can share by having one um, apart and the other together. So this is the 1976 model RC. And um, as you can see, one of the reasons that Marlin was such a success, I mean, this is a very simple rifle. Actually, the more I look at it and study the parts, the more I like it. It's hard to get something that's simple wrong. And this 1976 model has everything that you would look for in a lever action rifle. The wood is properly finished. The fitting of the walnut stock to the receiver is excellent. I actually wouldn't have to change anything. The forend, maybe it has a little bit of an odd look to it, to some people, and I mostly get these comments from you. It looks fine to me. It's definitely serviceable. You have the magazine spring here. You have magazine tube. You've got a couple of barrel bands. Um, everything that you see here is steel. The front sight, very simple. Ramp, a couple of screws. Um, I think this is the pivot pin for the lever. It's the screw. And a couple of pieces, like, it doesn't matter. You can see this is the totality of a Marlin 336. So, I then here's the bolt. We've looked at these before on other videos. And that's where it locks. And here's one lever or lever, depending on where you live. And then sometimes I collect these square ones at shows and from time to time if I feel like it I'll put together what amounts to a Texan um, version so that would mean this squared off lever and then the straight grip sock um, I picked this up for nothing somebody ordered these I don't know and uh, the store called me and they they, they never picked them up and said they never will pick them up. So I just thought, well, I'll pick this up and it would be easy to turn this or this into a Texan style. You can Google that. Um, they handle somewhat nicer. The only change I have to make is, is here because this curve is matched to the curvature of the original lever. So that's not a big deal. So, so far you haven't learned anything about the difference between the old and the new. All you know is that this is an excellent rifle, which you probably knew before. So, um, probably the first thing people wrote me about is the fitting of the stock to the receiver and the metal. And now this is a laminate stock. This is a 2018 or 2017 vintage, fairly new. You'll see there's no Marlin bullseye, which is a little white and black bullseye that would normally be here, but they often fall out just because the adhesive for some reason dries out. But you can buy, um, actually you can buy the bullseye like in a stick and then slice off bullseyes as you need them. 
but getting back to the new manufactured guns, so, I mean, I, I did notice a difference in the slickness, but I think that that has to do with the metallurgy and the finish and the newness of the action. This action has not been worked, um, you know, thousands of times. That, that probably has not been fired more than a few times, but the action might have been worked often. So there's something about lever action, people pick them up. Anyway, that's a whole bunch of assumptions. I took my Swiss files, and this is probably the most useful thing, because the metal feels so different between a new Remington 700 and an old one, and a new 336 and an old one. So I thought, well, I don't have a Rockwell hardness testing machine. So I used a primitive of like old gun makers system, and I have these excellent Swiss files, which they'll cut through just about any steel. And naturally, I don't want to mark anything, so I carefully just ran the, the file across the steel of the old one in different places and the new one. And kind of good news, the, the, the new model is actually excellent. There's nothing wrong with this steel. It, it, the finish is definitely different, and I can see very subtle differences in the shaping of the parts, especially when you take the gun apart, but they've done it in a very clever way so that the operation of the, of the rifle is effectively the same. And although the new one does not have micro groove rifling like the older model does, this particular Model C shoots very well for carbine. Um, I should say this is obviously the youth version. It's, it's just what I happen to have. But other than barrel length, it'll be the same. Um, and you can buy them with a walnut stock, naturally. Anyhow, so based on that Swiss file te te test, um, I can't say there's a superiority to the older steel. In fact, I would say it's probably slightly softer, but that could just be surface hardness, that could be finish, that could be the pressure I was using. I don't have scientific method in this particular comparison. But it gives you an idea based on taking apart these guns and looking what's what. Is one really inferior? Now you you may not like the, this cross bolt safety which the you know a lot of people complain about the safety that you push through the action. Um, I should probably do that slower so you can see how that works. But you know obviously with all the litigation, it's not going to be possible to make a firearm like this and not have some kind of new or obvious safety feature. And the fitting of wood to metal, you can see a gap here. And I think that what happened is this. Um, at the gun stores, when Marlin kind of was absorbed into, into the Remington group, maybe the people that were assembling the Marlins were not familiar entirely with every step of the manufacturing process and there could have been gaps in quality control. This is all my guessing based on on what I saw um, and not just with the 336. I looked at you know some 45 70s but did they all shoot and work exactly the way they're supposed to as far as I know they do. I can't see a qualitative, like a significant qualitative difference. Obviously the older ones seem to be the nicer guns. They just run slicker, but that could be a function of time, <laughs> precisely because they're, they're not brand new guns. Maybe this one will be the same in 20 years. Anyway, I don't want to ramble on and on, but for those of you that were wondering whether I'd come away from the comparison telling you don't touch the new ones. I can't say that. This works perfectly. The way the rifle is designed is almost, I would have to say, flawless. Um, a lot of you said you like Marlins better than Winchesters, and I completely understand that. These are remarkably well-made and designed firearms, and if you want to put a scope, this original system of the Marlins is far superior to the angle eject of the, of the Winchester. Um, so I kind of hope that covers it. You really can't go wrong with a Marlin, whether it's new or old. 
they they look fine to me. I wish I knew more about metallurgy and metal finishes, but I don't. And anyway, I try to be practical in my thinking and in my videos. And for someone heading out, uh, whether you pay 500 for a, an older one that's near new, I mean, it's strictly personal preference. I wouldn't hesitate to go to go and buy a a, a new Marlin um, at all. They're 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 superb. So I hope that kind of answers some of the questions. We, I, you know, I could talk about wood finishes and butt plates, but there's there's hardly. I mean, you can see it's just a Marlin butt plate and. You can't make it that great or that bad, new or old. Uh, all the forgings, the screws, the the uh, rifling and the barrel quality. I mean, some people tell me the new ones are more accurate. Maybe, maybe not. I'm, I'm using iron sights, and um, so there's always going to be some variance, which isn't a bad thing. Anyhow, that's about it for Marlins. Please send me any other questions you had. I can take these rifles apart again, I could take this one apart, but you would see essentially the same gun over and over. And frankly, I think you could interchange the pieces and I, I don't know that you would have a different product, really. So, hope that makes sense. Thank you very much for watching. I'll shoot a few videos during this holiday season. I hope they'll be interesting to you. Uh, please join me on Patreon as well as Instagram. And I'm trying to improve things in the new year. Hope to have a little more time for the channel. And I'm hoping YouTube uh, monetizes some of the videos, which would be a treat. But as it is, I keep going. I appreciate all your good and supportive comments. And as always, I wish you well. And we'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Take care. See ya.